please welcome Jamie Gangel. So once in a blue moon, you meet someone who is truly the triple threat, creative, brilliant, and not afraid to take chances. Nancy has all those qualities and more. She is a natural leader. She not only inspires everyone who works with her, but she is funny, wise, loyal, and yes, she is direct. She has strong opinions, and she would give me you-know-what for not saying that right up front. All of that makes Nancy a true role model, and as the award-winning president and CEO of A&E, she is on everyone's hottest list and most powerful list. But what I admire most is her self-deprecating sense of humor. She wears her success lightly, she is a down-to-earth superstar. Now today, the entire world knows how smart and successful Nancy is, and there are several people here who truly have played a critical role in her life. Her extraordinary mother, Carol, who taught by example, her amazing husband, Michael, who has cheered and supported her every step of the way, and her daughter, Alice, who's going to be the next generation of direct and opinionated. That said, I would like to take credit for one very small thing. And that is that I knew we were going to be standing here a long, long time ago, because I first met Nancy when she was my intern at NBC. Thanks to Karen Curry, who was smart enough to hire her, Nancy was just 21 years old. I was a little bit older, <laughs> but I immediately knew that Nancy was the gold standard and destined for great things. There was only one problem. Everyone else at NBC figured it out too. And before I knew what was happening, two of my esteemed colleagues, Andrea Mitchell and Katie Couric, tried to steal Nancy to be their intern. <laughs> now, taking on Andrea and Katie, legends in their own right, is not for the faint of heart. But in the end, we all won because Nancy figured it out. She worked seven days a week, around the clock, for all three of us. And as far as I can figure out, she has not taken a day off since. There is a moral to this story, by the way. Be nice to your interns. <laughs> because someday they may give your daughter an internship. True. So Nancy, in honor of your talent, your hard work, your vision, your leadership, your strong opinions, and most of all, your friendship, I'm thrilled to say, I told you so, <laughs> and present you with this year's Matrix Award. Thank you, thank you, Jamie. Um, no doubt that we'll all be working for Lily Silva someday, very, very soon. Um, my relationship with Jamie over the years has been both professional and personal. And the humility, the humanity, and the compassion, and the unflinching honesty that she brings to her reporting are truly amazing assets in our friendship. I want to thank the New York Women in Communications for this award and my team at A&E um, and everyone at Disney and Hearst who have been so supportive of me 
Um, and I really value um, you being here today and thank you very much. A shout out to many of my board members and Steve Swartz for being here. This recognition is incredibly personal um, and I'm deeply appreciative for it. I've sat in this audience many a time amazed at the women on this stage and inspired by the advice that they have given the room. And to be on the dais today with the expectation that I say something helpful is manage your expectations um, and is truly a, a very humbling experience. Um, I have always debated in my head you know, the value of being recognized as a woman versus just a great journalist, a producer, executive, or a CEO. So it was natural to think about these feelings as I prepared for today. And the reality is that despite my own questions over how to best honor the achievements of women, without women, I would not be standing up here today. I have literally been a physical baton from one amazing woman to the next, and my tribe is here with me today. My mom, who, gave, who had her own career and gave me the gift of an all-girls education, called on her childhood friend, Karen Curry, then executive producer of the Today Show, who helped direct me to the NBC internship program and Jamie, which ultimately led me to Abby, Raven, and a and &E. This team is my crew in both calm seas and turbulent ones, and having grown up in Rhode Island, you don't have much of a choice but to be thrown into the lessons of the ocean one way or another. And so in thinking about what to say to you and the scholarship winners today, I realized my experiences on the water correlate to the lessons that I've learned from the crew by my side. First, and most importantly maybe, is learn to capsize. Before you can take a boat out in the water by yourself, you have to know how to flip it upside down and get it right side up all by yourself. And Abby taught me to capsize at work by giving me the ability to fail day in and day out. I had never produced a pilot when Abby made me the head of development for A&E. We had never premiered a scripted series for history when we commissioned Hatfields and McCoys. And I had never done live long form TV when she sent me off to Hawaii to produce the 60th anniversary of Pearl Harbor in the wake of 9-11. It was her uncanny ability to somehow know that even if I failed, which I did often, and you can ask her, um, I would get back in the boat so be willing to turn everything upside down in your life in order to succeed. Second, have a North Star. Knowing your course but being willing to change it is one of the most important lessons in a boat because when the wind changes directions in a race, you will absolutely lose if you don't change course. Jamie acted on many occasions as my navigator or sometimes instigator, encouraging me to veer off course and trust my passion. My North Star was a career in television, but I let my course take me from the newsroom to this old house, to a science magazine show on discovery, and then to history. My North Star was certainly not to be a CEO. It was a passion for television. Passion makes the race fun, and I have found that if you love the race, it's much easier to see it as a journey. Three, take comfort in discomfort, and this is one that my team hears me say often, and you need to visualize this one. Um, I used to have to ride my bike to sailing camp every day growing up, and it was bad enough that we sailed all day, you know, nine to four, rain or shine, gale force winds, scorching heat, but my mother made me ride this skinny 10-speed bike with those weird converted, like handles, remember those, um, with my life jacket on. Um, she may have been trying to teach me to be prepared for anything, but the lesson was lost on me. Um, and looking back, it was more about the valuable lesson of perseverance. And with perseverance comes resilience. And I think that we can all agree that the women up here today are definitely resilient. In a time of incredible change in our industry and the world, having the determination to weather discomfort will make the difference between the winners and losers. 
And finally, always row in the same direction. I rowed crew in college, and it's an odd sport in some respects because you compete during the week against each other for a seat in the boat. But once you're in the boat, you have to be beautifully in sync. And in order to be in sync, you have to trust each other and have an unrelenting desire to win together. There was always some point in the race where a team member had a weakness. It might be the start or a power 10. Mine was the 1500 meter mark. As teammates, we all knew each other's weaknesses and had to compensate for each other in those moments. Our weaknesses were overcome by our collective strengths. So find people you trust and accept each other's weaknesses to get stronger. You can't row an eight seat shell by yourself and it's not nearly as much fun to sail alone as it is with a crew. Which gets me to my last point. And frankly, it isn't a lesson that I've actually learned all that well and I'm still working on. Ask for help once in a while. I'm not that good at it, but I can't think of a time when I have reached out to my crew or even some of the people on this stage, Janice, Bonnie, and they haven't come to my side, nor have I never regretted asking for it. We're here today to recognize the achievement of women, and as long as these luncheons and special issues or ceremonies honoring women are needed, we will need to make up commitment to each other to continue the dialogue. Change takes time, and many of you in the audience today will have to continue the work that was started over 30 years ago when this ceremony was first launched to promote equality. So find your navigators, your crew, maybe even a captain, and be, for ready, be ready for whatever waters come your way. Despite all of these navigational lessons in my life, I would be adrift at sea if it weren't for my husband, Michael, my captain, and his first mates, Alice and Jackson. Thank you.